Michael Cutlets is here. Michael, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Awesome. How are you doing? It's good to see you. As well. It's an exciting time to be you. You've got the kids are all right. Tuesdays at 830 on ABC. Now, when you... Uh, when you find out that you're you're getting killed off The Walking Dead. Why do you got to go right there? No, I know. I know it's tough. There? We're Hi, in a good place now. When you died. <laughs> wow. But but do you sit there and you go like, "Oh, what the fuck? I don't I don't need to get killed off this show. I don't have anything lined up for what's next. This was it. Everybody knew my I handlebar was, mustache." No, I was good. I was good with it. Yeah? Yeah. I've been uh, I had a nice little run. I fell in love. I was happy. I knew it was time to die. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Were you, uh, did you did you get sick of it at all? Like not the people, but the idea of like, all right, I'm ready to do something new. No, actually the people are the only thing I did get sick of. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> no, it was uh, it was awesome. You you separated, you know, from most of us out there, we separated from our families, so uh, we shoot in Georgia, and I think there were two or three of the ca of the uh, regular cast members that actually lived out there. But everybody else is brought in from out of town, so you you kind of find a, a really cool family bond because you're all you have out there. Um, I mean, the weather <laughs> I could choose better weather situations. Muggy as shit weather, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Atlanta was fantastic. I loved Atlanta. Yeah. But being yeah. away from your family is not the greatest thing in the world. It, it was all right. Yeah. You, didn't want to move, you didn't want to move into Atlanta full time? No. No. How old but are your I, kids? I, love, I have uh, twin boys that are 22. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do they go to college? They do. Oh, they, they still They're go. telling me they okay. do. I don't know. Were you on that list? Did you pay the, the 500 grand to get them wherever? So we, have, we only have a couple minutes. There's some guys waiting downstairs to take me <laughs> to my next appointment. Uh. <laughs> Does that stuff boggle your mind when you go like... You know, you went through this process, you got the kids into school, and you're like, well, I don't understand. I do, well, see, the thing is, I, I, and this is like two-part. I do understand. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand the, the, the need or the want to do the best for your kid. What I don't understand is the, it, all the, the tremendous illegal things that then continued from it, and the, and the cheating on the test. It's like cheating at golf. It's like, yeah, look, if you, like, you don't know it, you don't know it. You right. Know, I don't understand. Like, I cheated on the SATs. You know, I guess because everyone thinks that it's a rigged system anyway, so they, they kind of want to give everyone a pass. But no, it's like, you know, the tax evasion and all. It's like it, it becomes like a like you're a criminal. But how do you have that discussion? I, I don't have kids, but how do you have that discussion with your kid when you're like, like if you just do something and they don't know it, but how do you go, all right, look, you have, to, there was some kid that they said to talk slower in the psychiatric evaluation or something. Really? Because, yeah, to because get a this way, you, you can get a moderator or You can get a moderator, yeah. you can get a longer, like That's not that you're special needs, but that you're yeah. like a little slow and you need more time. It's like, how do you say to your kid, just act like you're not as bright so you can get more time on the test? How do you have the, how do you well, have the you go, you want to go to the school you want to go to, you're like, we're going to screw these people over. Okay, mom. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I mean, mine wouldn't. Mine are like, like they kind of like to do everything on their own anyway, whatever it is. I, I, there's elements of it I don't understand at all. Yeah, you would think, I mean, to your point about the, the illegalities by like, you know, maybe step one, it starts to sound like, oh, it'd be nice to have an advantage. But by step two, you're like, wait a minute, we're starting to go into this web of of things that we're not going to be able to get out of. We should not do this. I know, but I think we all, everyone agrees, though, or knows that like that, that system anyway, it's like, well, we buy a building, we can get in. Yeah. I mean, most of us are not in a position to do that, but somehow that's okay. It's You're like, right. oh, it's the so-and-so wing. Well, their kid got in because they're a legacy. There's just so much stuff built into the system where you sort of go, well, oh, if I figure out a way... That's okay then. This right. is just a more obvious you know. version of what people have been doing for years in colleges. Yeah. This is just like a more blatant example well, of, right. of and so you, Until you go into, oh, and guess what? You can write it off on your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hmm. the Oh, the donation, yeah. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, there is. There's a legal way to buy your way into college and an illegal way to buy Which your way. Which makes into it college. confusing because yes. then you go, well, you're rich, but you're not rich enough. And right. everybody else who doesn't even have the means to even consider that is sort of like, what the hell are you all talking yeah. about? Yeah, it is a more obvious way. To, that's right. People, yeah, yeah. My father went here, and if his father's a powerful alumni, then you know, it's okay. Yeah, then it's yeah, okay. no problem. Because I give to the alumni association. Exactly. You know, you've got that recurring exactly. you got that recurring donation that, that sets up you set it up when the kids are like yeah. ten. So by the time they're eighteen, we're good to go. Did you go to college? I did. Are I you attached to, well, to your I college? To a, I went to an art school. Okay. So I always laugh when I say that. I don't know why. Because <laughs> I think everyone else is laughing when I say it. Um, I went to the California Institute of the Arts. So do you go back like I never understood like the with the alumni how they get so attached to this. It's like just let it go. Yeah. You went there, it's done. Well, you're yeah. just Hold jealous because you didn't go to college. I did not, no, but I wouldn't go back anyway. I don't go back to my high school. If I, if I couldn't have gotten into the art school, I wouldn't have gone to college. I mean, I went to City College. I just would never, I was never a great student, mm -hmm. like, ever. 
What did you take in art school? Uh, acting. Seems oh, to oh have you just worked did, out. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm look, I love looking at people's IMDb, like the first stuff they got. Yeah. Like from like, you, for you, it was Why, because like you 80s. hope that one day maybe you'll get something? I know, mine is empty right now. They, I list my auditions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, think um, sure, I think you're terrific. I, I, I've seen a bunch of your stuff. Well, thank you. Been a fan um, before this. I'm not kissing your butt and trying to get into your college. <laughs> <laughs> 21 Jump Street. Like you did a lot of like uh, weekly shows. You did like Chicago Hope. Yep. Like uh, Episodics. Yeah. NYPD Blue. I'm fascinated with this stuff like how long did you did you do all these things where you were auditioning for one episode before you finally announced something well it's funny because like uh, NYPD Blue it's, it's been on the air so long I think I auditioned for NYPD Blue six or eight times before I finally got cast what would you play what would you play uh, first I was uh, <laughs> I was hired to play this guy who had who Sipowitz thought had had shaken his baby to death but he hadn't um, but then they threw that script out. This is when David Milch was there and they were rewriting, you know, he would just be in the middle of a story and toss it out and that start can't, over. That can't be great for you because the, they look at you and they go like, no, he can't play the guy who didn't shake his baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's great. <laughs> the, the, the material was fantastic. But then I went, I went up, they tossed that story out and they wound up hiring me like two days later to play a white supremacist group that came into New York and we were a bunch of old army buddies and we... We uh, burned up one of our other buddies because he had uh, married a person of color. Wow! Oh, yeah. so, oh you yeah. burned the guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to do that, you know. Sure. I mean, yeah. when you're a racist white guy with a <laughs> monosyllabic name, yeah, right. He's going burn your military. old friends up. Well, yeah. he just shouldn't have done what he did, right? Yeah. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> consequences have, yeah. uh, or actions have consequences. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. at the end of it, are you caught? Are you arrested? Of course. It's NYPD Blue. What <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the good guys not going to win? That was Dennis right. Franz, right? That was. Yeah, he's that the was. best. Yeah, Jimmy Smith. That was Jimmy Smith. And yeah. he was oh. a phenomenal, phenomenal actor. Um, just so, I, great time. What was the gig where you started to feel like you had confidence, not in your ability, but in the fact that you were going to be able to make a living doing this? Because I would imagine when you're doing episodes of series and going you're making a living but there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to continue to make there's a no living. guarantee ever mm -hmm. honestly i mean i have i have good buddies uh who you know just stop working i mean that, I mean, that sounds really sad and it, I, and it is um but did you go back to day jobs or other you, careers yeah and i had started out doing construction uh, and film and television uh that's why i paid my way through school and if i had to go back to do it again i would you but did at, no, at yeah. points right you worked mm -hmm. behind the scenes while yeah. you were acting as well yeah yeah until uh band of brothers was kind of the big transition where it was i don't i don't think i thought okay i don't have to you know i don't have to worry about working again but i moved into a place where i didn't have to worry about right working. you know i mean work kept coming out a little that. paranoia is healthy like i'm obsessed yeah. with the I'm fact they're paranoid. gonna take everything yeah you yeah, got it you got it like oh, okay this is the last gig enjoy it yeah <laughs> <laughs> well so that's yeah when you're ready when you're when you're okay like storyline wise i'm ready for my my role on the walking dead to be done it makes sense that it would be done here sure. but monetarily and in terms of getting a check every week isn't there a part of you yeah. that goes like oh no what's next yeah yeah 100 percent yeah, and if you're not, you're an idiot, in in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like if you're not sort of thinking, hmm, <laughs> you know, hmm, God, I guess what's if, next? If I leave the handlebar stash on, I yeah. could do comic cons. I'm quitting. For a while. What are you doing next? I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone like you know. I don't think anyone's thinking that way. What'd you do on Twenty One Jump Street? I played uh, a boxer dude who uh, did I kill somebody? Probably killed somebody. Probably I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think I killed somebody. Early on, I killed a lot of people. You did. Yeah, I killed a lot of people later on too. Uh, I've never killed career. anyone in a, in a. No, that's about right. But I'm that's what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's I, literally I, I why I, I chose to, to to do the new project. Kids are all right because I was kind of tired of killing people. But you're still a, a, a working class gruff dude, even yeah. in the kids are all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa! My I... loving, caring father that you obviously have misunderstood. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe the nuance yeah. was lost on me. <laughs> 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 I haven't seen it. So you play? Do you play a gruff guy, or do you play? I a, do. I, it's a gruff. It I takes place in the seventies. It's we're an Irish Catholic family. There's eight kids, all boys, and you you know you got to rule with a semi metallic fist. Yeah, <laughs> it's a soft <laughs> metal. Yeah. It's, it's not quite exactly. iron. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, part of it is you know you know the the working class mentality and just getting the kids through what they need to get through. Don't worry about, you know. It's like getting the parents through what the parents need right. to get through. It's like, you know, you don't really have time to worry about the kids. Were your were your parents supportive of you uh, being in the arts? 
You know, they, you grew up. Were. Did they you grow up in Long Island or? I grew up uh, born in Long Island. Grew up mostly in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. We moved out of New York when I was five, and then we were in New Jersey in Lakewood for another. 10, 11 years after what, Lake, that. I've done gigs there. Where, where is Lakewood? Is that like Western Jersey? I don't remember. It's, I, it's uh, north. like central beach community-ish, sort of by Six Flags. Oh, I was I, I, I mean, was sort way of off. by. It's actually by. Okay. <laughs> it is it's by Six, six Flags. flags. Oh, that's I lived in Six Flags. flags. <laughs> yeah. People used to drive by our house and go, how do you get to Six Flags? <laughs> don't ask a, you know, a 16-year-old kid how to get to Six Flags. Did you go a lot or no? We did. You did. Yeah, we had your you know, summer passes and that stuff. I was taught before, I, I get very sick on rides. I do too. You do? Yeah, I can't. Nothing. So yeah, what would you do at Six Flags? Just get sick? Yeah, and walk around. <laughs> yeah. You know? Meet girls? <laughs> Meet girls, never. <laughs> so like, yeah. Just hang out. <laughs> so, uh, do you have siblings? Uh, I do, I have two brothers. So were, was everybody, was it like an artistic household, no. or were you just kind of the standout of like, no, I like this acting stuff? I, I like the acting stuff, I just, I never thought I would be able to make it in, it was a blue collar community, it was not mm-hmm. really an option, so it wasn't sort of like, I mean, I like doing it, but I thought, okay, well, I'll be able to do this in community theater or whatever, but not, it, the career was never even on the radar. You figure you have your construction job, and then you do community theater, and that would be that. Exactly, yeah, yeah do it on the side, and then, you know, when I can, then probably whatever. I, there was no, honestly, there was no, when I was growing up, there was no thought that that was going to be the thing. So, me. have you ever had a, like, was there ever a game plan, like, here's my strategy going in, or was it, wow, this is somehow working, I'll just move on to the next thing? It kind of evolved, and it was like, this is somehow working, and then when, there was a point when I was going to City College where my dad walked in on me when I was going to go to school for engineering, I was going to transfer out to an engineering school, um, and he was like, what are you doing? And it was basically like, well, I'm doing my homework. He's like, no, what are you doing? He was like that, you know, John Cusack can say anything. Mm-hmm. He's sort of like, ah, oh, really? You want to know right now? <laughs> yeah, this is the time um, we're having this conversation. This like kickboxing, sport of the future. Um, <laughs> I basically told him, you know, I, I wanted to do acting, but I wasn't really an option. And he was like, well, why throw away your dream when you haven't even tried it? Wow. Yeah. So I quit school the next day. Which he was sort of like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, I didn't little, say that. I didn't mean like finish this. Like, yeah, what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and then I applied to one school, which was Cal Arts, because uh, I, I could not see myself going to a regular college. I just, I just wasn't, I wasn't equipped for it at the time. I probably would have done fine later, but at the time was not equipped. And and I got in and uh, uh, had an awesome time there, and it was incredibly, incredibly beneficial to me. Is your dad still living? He is. Oh, so he's seen you all your success. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. So how do you apply to like uh, when you apply to again? I never applied to a college. I went to Middlesex Community one semester. It didn't go well. So no, had, no, no, no. B, oh, that's B and three Fs. Yeah. <laughs> dismal yeah, failure. You nailed you get, one of them. Yeah, 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 Where'd you get a B? In? English, and it was a it's gift. Like rock, wall climbing, rock climbing. Right? Yeah. Isn't, isn't that great? The one professor is like, we're going to give Jimmy a B because we just want him to pass through, and all the other professors are going. This is clearly an F. It's not like, happen. We don't even know who this guy is. Yeah, yeah I, I fucking flopped in. Uh, <laughs> I, I, in problems and statistics, Western civilization, and uh, science or whatever it was. Did you go to class and just fail everything? Yeah, or? kind of. I was terrible. <laughs> like, he doesn't even like, <laughs> most people are like, no, I never went. He's like, no, I was there every day. Yeah. I tried. And I still failed. <laughs> I you just, did try. I wouldn't apply myself properly, but yeah, I did go. It was a high school co- slash college courses. I dropped out of high school. So they were, they were I like, almost did. I, so that's where I was. I was taking, you know, taking... <laughs> Remedial math, well, not remedial math, whatever it is, like the, the 101, yeah. whatever, 99, whatever is. It's just, yeah, <laughs> before we get warns, to 101, yeah, we're not there yet. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you hear all these stories about the high school kids taking college classes in high school. Yep. Yeah. I took high school classes in college. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I was yeah, like, yeah. I need something that will transfer into high school that I can also yeah, use. Exactly. And they're like, all right, well, these are for you, dope. <laughs> like, yeah. They're kind of like you have your foot in high school and one foot in college. So you're did like, you. There's so many people in this class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you end up failing the math class, which meant that you didn't get the high school credits either? Oh, yeah. No, no, oh, no, no, credits, no credits. <laughs> that sucks. No high school credits. But it made me get my driver's license. So I would take the bus every day to uh-huh. Middlesex Community College, and I would miss it all the time. So it finally it motivated me to get a driver's license. Silver lining. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there was a silver lining. Yeah. I got a driver's license. I was always very scared. That's good. Did you did you move out to L.A. after college, or did you live out there at any point? I uh, moved out, uh, finished my last year of high school, actually, in uh, Riverside, California. Moved out to live with my dad. Oh, so he moved California. out there. Yeah. That must have made it easier for you to get into acting. It did, I, and that's probably, location was probably a huge part of it. Had I stayed in New Jersey, I, I don't, even though it's close to New York, obviously. Well, Lakewood's far, though. But, yeah, well, yeah, but it's we're closer to the city than, you know. Being in Ohio or something, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So when you, were you doing theater first? Do you mm -hmm. remember like the first theater shit you did? The first, yeah. I, elementary school. I remember my mom used to make costumes for me. I did like uh, the the Cowardly Lion in The Wizard of Oz, and I was Bert in Mary Poppins. Did you do a good Cowardly Lion? I can't, I can't, yeah, I can. If I were king of the forest. <laughs> Listen to that man. voice. <laughs> As a kid, I, I was probably good. like, If I were king of the forest! <laughs> <laughs> I just watched that again recently, because I hadn't seen it in many, many years. And I forgot there was so much of a lead up before that she got blown out of into Oz. Oh, yeah. yeah, I well, forgot. Anyway, that's called establishing. Well, we used to we used to talk about you know. Oh my God! Well, it's going to turn to color. It's going to turn to color. It that was fun. the big thing. And a lot of people don't remember that it started in black and white when yeah. she was in Kansas. And then when she that was like a huge in Oz, thing yeah. at the time. But it Oz takes forever to get to color. Yeah, finally. Like, oh, for crying out loud! When are we going to get to? I Oz? forgot about that. That he meets the fucking wiz. She meets yeah, the wizard. Yeah, everybody. She taught. Now, are you supposed? That was probably to... by design though, because they didn't want to have to colorize that much film. Probably not. They were just like, let's leave as much yeah, black half, and white as humanly black possible. And white, yeah. Half color. Did now when she's um, getting ready to be? No, she's like hanging out at the farm and fucking Aunt B. Was her name Aunt May or Aunt B? Probably Aunt, Aunt B. Bessie. Aunt was B. Bessie? Bess. Uh, was giving everybody shit and yelling at all the farm hands, and then you realize, oh, that's the cowardly lion, that's the scarecrow, that's the Tin Man. Right? Are you supposed to recognize them once you see them in Oz? It's okay if you do. I, I didn't. I, I remember, remember, you know, realizing it when she's like, and you were there, and you were there, and you, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, I remember oh, going like, oh, no, oh, you're right. You're right. Wait, what that wasn't a fuck? tin man. That was that guy with silver oh, paint on. What? Uncle Charlie. But they show them a lot first, so I'm wondering, are you supposed to recognize that or not? I don't remember. Yeah. It's okay if you do. Probably. I think it's okay if you don't, and you get you at the end, but if you do- Got me it, at the end pretty good. It did. Yeah. It did. Do you do? Did you do musical theater after? I did. I did so much musical as theater as an adult. As a I, well, I thought it was an adult. Mm -hmm. um, no, not as an adult. <laughs> Just as like a. I, there's, no one has done more singing and dancing than me. It, meaning someone who does not sing or dance. Uh huh. I it was did so many musicals when did I you ever do that's Les Mis? all they were doing. We didn't do Les Mis. Fuck. We did. What did we do? Like Oklahoma and, and Pippin and Fiddler on the Roof and. I mean, did so, you enjoy oh them? Oh my god, did I enjoy? I don't it? care for musicals. I didn't. No, I couldn't sing or dance. It seems like you could because you got like, cast in good roles. Uh, well, when I, I was in school, then, I, was I did doing chorus. I, I was like the guy I was there, and then, and then I was hanging lights in between. Oh, so you weren't Bert and Mary Poppins for all the shows? No, I was in the third grade doing that. That you were good in. Third that was grade. good, but when it got into adult stuff, I did a lot of musical theater with singing and dancing, which I do neither of. I see. So you were not yeah, great. It was there. the only thing that was available. Right. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. It was like I'm going to Broadway, and I'm like, all right, see you later. Hey, when you when you became a like pro and this is what you're doing, was there anything that they wanted you to audition for that you didn't? That you're like, fuck. I went, there's a couple things. After I did Band of Brothers, um, I was approached by pretty much any kind of military thing that came out. You know, that was even close to to my age or or body type, and uh, there were some things that were. Uh, uh, not done well, not researched well, that they were trying to get me to do, and I, I would not do something that represented the military in a way that was not accurate. Um, I felt that having done Band of Brothers, that, that put the responsibility back on me to, because from now on, I bring something to the project that has the history of these men with it, Yeah, and there's a responsibility that I have to honor those men and those families, and whether it be real or imagined it for me it's real so that was about i i, I remember it's been many that was about like the, world war ii yeah and uh at the end don't they show all the real guys talking throughout the, the oh, whole throughout, thing started okay. as a um uh it's about the 101st airborne and it, it's wrapped around um the, the actual vets at the interviews that they did and the stories that they that they they gave uh and it's based on the book by stephen ambrose don't all those guys brothers. too? Those those guys like war veterans. They talk about the one thing that they wish. I've heard them say that maybe not there, but they wish they had been able to talk about it when they got home. Like because none of them talked about it. They were all yeah. quiet and just yeah. shut up about it. Well, and... it was a different war. You yeah. Know, when you, the Vietnam situation came afterwards, it was you know it was all about talking about it and discussing it. And I, I think that you know that's why we see this 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 sort of raw emotion that comes out of it. With World War Two, the sort of feeling was okay. We basically. This is the, sort of the first time in a long time, anyway, that there was an actual enemy. We knew what evil was. It was Hitler. We defeated it. Okay, come home. We'll take care of you. We'll, you know, give you loans, pay for your school, bury it. Let's not talk about that. Yeah. And and they didn't, you know. And I think that there was a lot of damage done because of that. Yeah, because all this shit you do in war, and they they had no one to talk to about yeah. us. They just kind of swallowed it. Yeah, we had many many stories of families telling us, you know, after the the 
the parents or the relatives saw Band of Brothers and watched it, they, you know, the Foot Lockers came out and they would take out the uniforms and discuss like what they did, just talking about their buddies. It was it was pretty incredible to be part of that. Yeah, really incredible, actually. Yeah, I mean, and and yeah, I mean, that seems like the type of thing that if you do, if you can't talk about that because the experience, mm-hmm. and I think that's why when they're done right shows and movies about the military and the experience is so compelling is because it's so even though it's for us and it's these people are the people who are living right next to us it is so foreign that life is so foreign to anything that we exist through it's incredible and i don't think anybody can appreciate it unless they've actually lived it yeah you know i agree it's a different breed. People that are just do what they're told. Like I was reading something about like uh, we were watching something about it was like Navy SEAL training or whatever it was or Team SEAL Six, whatever it was you go through in that. And like the fact is like they 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 keep fucking with you. And mm-hmm. at the end that you think you're done, like all right, I graduated, and like all right, you got to go for a run, and it's a fucking like a twenty mile run. It's like a three month run. Yeah. You just, just got to <laughs> run. Pack your shit. I've thought of that when I was on the treadmill. Like how? Oh, uh, so you you you. Relate. Well, <laughs> I see. Because sometimes your trainer will be like five more minutes, but it's really seven. But I'm like, that's and like literally. I don't think I can do five more minutes out of ten. Right. And like, what would I do if a guy told me to run twenty miles? I would just, I would just go. I'm done. I want to go home. You would. Yeah. I'd well, be, that's why you're, you're do. very far that's from. That's why they got the bell. Yeah. <laughs> now you can go ring. Yeah. The bell. I would literally <laughs> ring it on the way in. <laughs> I would hate it. It's like, hey guys, where's the bell? <laughs> well, if you had been born in the greatest generation, they probably would have thrown you out. They would have. You know, they probably would yeah, not Peter have Dinklage's it. father would have given me that speech that he gave him in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me in the fucking ocean. Well, you're not, uh, you're no longer in the military. You're no longer fighting zombies. Now you get to be a family man. Get to be a family man. Raising children yep. in the 70s. Yep. And there are, uh, you know, you definitely guys, you guys draw comparisons, not right on the nose, but pretty close. You're drawing comparisons, I feel like, to what's going on now when you uh, bring up the Nixon stuff a little bit. Oh, I think so. I think yeah. it's a great reminder, you know, everyone, whatever, you know, side of the aisle or, you know, circle you sit on, um, uh, everybody thinks like, <laughs> you know, this is the end. Like this is the most horrible time we've ever been through. And, and the truth is it's not. It's like, it's happened, this, it's happened before. Yeah. It's happened many times before. And in the end, we, we do come out of it and we do come out of it stronger. Um, and it's, I, I think it's, a, you know, very hopeful, loving, you know, sort of look back uh, at where we were and comparing it to where we are, you know, without, without you know, punching you in the head with it. That's a very good perspective on it too because there are people that feel like maybe because we're inundated with content more now than we ever have been Mm -hmm. that every time things are going bad we're in the end of days and and it's never been this bad and Uh, and it's realistically it yeah exactly it's it's like over and over again it's like you hear something if if you catch something when it first comes out it's a headline you're like oh my gosh this this bus blew up and then i you know then my dad will be like four days later oh my god did you hear a bus just blew up (laughs) right i'm like wait no that was not that 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 it makes it okay that a bus blew up but Everything is like so layered and happening on this, you know, repeating cycle and it's over and over again. And it's like everybody's, you know, when if you really sat down, you could sort of make a list of 10 things and everybody's list would be this, the same 10 things mm-hmm. of like, you know, shitty things that have happened in the past month. Right. And it's, it's not like there's a thousand things. It's like, no, there's these 10 things that are on blast. So like, turn off your phone, you know, turn off the news feed, like yeah. get away from it for a minute. And every, you know, you realize everything's not so bad. Talk to the people that are your just next to you like exactly. they're just hanging out with you yeah a bus yeah. did just blow up actually it was a, i think it might have been the driver might have been killed but it was a like a gas explosion there's footage of it in uh in sweden or something it was really weird the bus just exploded and, but it wasn't an attack just a, well most of us aren't going online searching for bus explosion videos. i didn't look for it. it was just there it hit me in the head the bus the bus no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, there it is too easy <laughs> no i didn't we get we got it in our news feed yeah. yeah you got you guys said it to me there it is He's like, it just fucking uh just going and you're reading the ad it, and it blows, and the bus up. blows up. And it blows up. So kind of a natural gas thing. And then the guy films his leg. Good yeah, job, And asshole. he happened to be filming him behind him just for no yeah, why reason. Why would you film a bus for no reason? That'd be the first guy I'd talk to. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a cop. I played one on TV. But yeah. that guy, I would want to talk to him first. <laughs> what was 11th floor? 11th, 11th hour. 11th hour. What was 11th hour? That was uh, it's like a medical uh, drama, I think, about... Uh, like it would be like the like the CDC. There was you know the everybody was gonna die unless they figured it out, and it was like you know typical one hour 
drama. Like, yeah. It's all, you know, tragic for, for 59 minutes, and then the her- heroes, the leads of the show, go, I figured it out. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think it had to do with communicable diseases and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. What year is that? That's so fu- that's, that's what I'm asking, because it's just such a random thing in the middle. Like, it's cr- I don't even it's know so that, I that I remember it. I'm like, <laughs> what was the 11th hour? It's after the 10th and before the 12th. Uh, what it, year was that? It was uh, 2009. You played Ben Finney. Of course I did. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Jim likes to have the IMDb printed out so he can just point to random things and go, what's this? I, I <laughs> love it, though, because like, what you're yeah, doing is the most important thing in the world. Like, sure. When you're auditioning for stuff, you're yeah. like, fuck, I got this. I'm so psyched, and you're getting there. And that's your whole world is that day. And then it's just so unimportant it becomes 10 a years blip. later. Uh, well, a no, blip. I don't know. I, I'll remember stuff. I'm probably setting myself up for failure right now. But I'll remember like stuff that came. And sometimes the character name will just come back, and the whole event will come back. Because it is... So intense. You know, I had a buddy who, uh, Frank John Hughes, who's a, a writer, terrific actors in Band of Brothers as well. And he said, you know, as a guest actor, you're like required to basically knock it out of the park every time. Right. So like hmm. if you're on, if you're in a regular cast, you come in and you can be sick or you can have a bad day and you, you, know, you get home, they rearrange the schedule. But as a guest cast, you're like, you got to crush it sure. every time. And, you know, and if you look at like the baseball hall of fame, you got to like be good 50% of the time and you're in the hall of fame. Right. Like if you're a 500 player. It's like, oh my God, like you're amazing. <laughs> but as a guest actor, like 500 gets you fired. Right. Sure. Like every time. <laughs> you, know? you have to do well so, every yeah, time. So they're, they tend to be the intense, sort of really emotionally laid, uh, uh, laden roles, you know, where all the guest cast gets to, you know, knock their brains out and the, the regular sort of contemplate, you know, hmm, interesting. Who were you in Lost? Who was I in Lost? I was uh, Michelle Rodriguez's partner uh, in Flashbacks. I started out as a beat cop, and then in the end, I came back and did another episode where I was a detective, and I actually sent Hugo to the his insane asylum, uh, which is where he wanted to be to be protected. Right, I forgot Michelle Rodriguez was in this. Yeah, yeah, man. 